We're going to learn some of the basic yet essential tools of Photoshop by manipulating a photograph into a cubist composition. Let's begin by opening the image. It's important that the image is large, as in we want a lot of pixels to avoid fuzzy pixelated outcomes. Before we begin, let's take a look at our workspace. I am using Essentials. I am going to customize it in one way though. We can drag and drop the Layers tab up to the next panel. Look for the blue lines. Then I'll click on the hamburger and close this tab group, thereby giving me more visual space for all of the layers I'm about to create. Let's double click over layer one to rename it something that makes sense to us. Then I will lock this layer. Now I will get the rectangular selection tool. Photoshop calls this the marquee tool. I'll drag a wide selection here and then use the copy and paste keyboard shortcuts. A new layer has appeared in the layers panel. In this case, the new layer pasted in the exact same place on the photo. So I like to use the keyboard arrows to move the selection until I can see where it is. Then, using the Move tool, I can click on it to move it around. I'll repeat this process with a new selection from the yellow wall. With each new selection, make sure that you are on the original photo layer and that you are using the Selection Marquee tool. Then, we use the Move tool to move it around. There will be a lot of back and forth here. I'll save myself some time by pasting this wall selection a few times. Notice how a new layer appears with each pasted selection. I'll drag a selection over the ground area, then copy and paste. I'll try a slight shift. I'll paste another copy and move it about. Now let's take a moment to start organizing our layers. I will hold down the shift key and select layers 5 and 6. Then I will click on the new group icon. We're going to organize our layers into folders, starting with the ground selections. I can double click over group 1 to rename it something logical. Let's do the same thing for the yellow wall layers. I'll copy and paste a new selection and paste that same selection two more times. I'll paste a third copy and do something different to this one. Let's go to the edit drop down and then free transform. Once this bounding box appears, we can change the size by dragging the corners. We can move it around and we can rotate it. When finished, we need to either click Commit or press the keyboard Enter key. I'll make a new selection over the bike seat area. Switch to the original photo layer if you're not already there, then copy and paste. Instead of going to the Edit dropdown for Free Transform, let's use the shortcut Command T or Control T. Now let's move it here and rotate it a bit. To make this piece look more intentional, I'll copy this back piece again and move it like so. Let's zoom in and make a new selection. Notice the limitations with this tool, only dragging into vertical or horizontal rectangles. Well, we can modify these selections. To do this, go to the Select dropdown and then Transform Selection. This bounding box tells us we can now move, rotate, or scale. I'll rotate and scale down a bit to match this part of the bike. Then click Commit or Enter to confirm the selection modification. Now we can copy and paste. I'll move the new layer over here and then Command T to scale and rotate. Now let's create a new group, aka folder, and rename it Bicycle Parts. Then I will select layers 12 through 14 and drag them onto that new group. I'll move some more layers into that group that are also bicycle parts. Organizing our layers in this way makes it so much easier to continue our editing. Now let's try the circle selection tool. We get to this by holding down on the rectangle tool. Photoshop calls this the elliptical marquee. Let's make a selection around the wheel. To make a perfect circle, hold down the shift key. I made a pretty good guess at the size, but I'll scale down slightly with the transform selection feature. Copy and paste, and we have ourselves a new extra wheel. In case you are wondering what this is, it is the contextual toolbar. This toolbar is basically trying to guess at what you want to do so that you can do it quicker. You can turn it off and on under the window dropdown. I'll make another circle selection over this part of the bike. Transform the selection, copy and paste, and then move it over here. 
Now maybe I'll copy and paste another wheel and move it over here. As my composition gets crowded, you can see why it's helpful to have organized my layers into groups, because now I can hide them so I can clearly see what I am selecting. I'll make a bunch of new vertical selections now and stagger them about. I'll move these new layers into my yellow wall group. Now I will copy and paste a bunch of wheels. You can select multiple layers to copy and paste to create more copies faster. Notice where the opacity feature is located. We can adjust the opacity per layer or per group, which is handy. Once we are done, we can save the file. I'll save it to my cloud documents. Then I will export a PNG file. Here's the finished composition. It would be more cubist of me if the bicycle was less recognizable. It is tough to break those orderly decorative inclinations at times. <laughs>